Hey guys, I'm in the post harvest or washing station of Wise Earth Farm and I wanted to show you guys this pack house because it's really, really well designed and John has added some stuff to this that uh, I really like. So I'll let him kind of show you guys around. So this is a, a bubbler that you can bubble anything. Like um, we primarily use it for roots. Uh, we designed it that it fits two of these standard sized crates. Those are crates that bulbs come in from uh, Holland, I believe, yep. to pretty much all the nursery, uh, nursery operations. And uh, we can do four at a time in here. It comes with casters. We can roll it outside in the summertime and in the wintertime, it just slides into this spot right here and there's a hookup underneath this table to drain into our uh, municipal drain system. Nice. Uh, so that's our bubbler there. So that basically just loosens all the dirt on those roots and then when you go to spray them over here, the dirt comes off really easy. Yeah, we use, yeah exactly. We bring it out here on the table to, uh, to get rid of the fine hairs, the last little bit of uh, dirt and yeah, that makes, so, makes, makes our job here, I would say about 60% less. Way easier. Yeah. So let's, these, are, these are pretty interesting washing tables. Uh, yes. You were telling me that these come from something, some like pig farms or something like that? Yeah, so this is actually a farrowing, uh, farrowing crate slat. So in a farrowing barn, which is the area of a pig barn where the piglets get raised, where mama, cow come, uh, mama pig comes in, gives birth and raises, they raise their piglets. So they would be in this setup for about six weeks and there would be a crate up on top of here and mama would sit on top of these. Hmm. So this is expanded metal with a anti-fungal, antibacterial plastic coating right on it. Wow. So super easy to wash. It's designed to wash at high pressure, high temperature to disinfect your, your, uh, uh, your barn because there's a lot of diseases in commercial uh, pig barns. So yes, and they are seven and a half feet long by, I believe, four feet wide. So it ended up being a really great washing table. Yeah, so you just spread the root veggies right on there and just power, you just wash them off with that, yes. right? Well, we do a lot of different stuff with this. We can, uh, we have, um, what do we have over there, right? Okay, we have a insect, like uh, insect mesh that you go over top of a window. We can put that over top of here to, in order to like grate greens or dry greens or do whatever. So we can use them for a lot of different things, dry stuff okay. or wash. So this table here does not have any catchment to, gra uh, to grab the water. Okay. So we will use this as a packing table, as a drying table, as sorting table, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then we get into this, these two in here, these are hooked up together with a pond liner underneath that funnels itself down to a drain system underneath. If you come over here, actually you can see the drain. And then it comes into this setup in here, which is a homemade trap, a uh, sand trap, and then goes out into municipal water. So this whole table is self-draining, self-cleaning, uh, uh, like the, the, the sand settles out and then disappears into municipal water. And so yeah, all the, uh, all the debris just settles and that's why the water drain is higher than that, right? Because then that, that's that right. sort of sediment-free water that drains. Right. And inside I have a, a perforated so that I don't get chunks going down into the drain and, and plugging it up. Wow, very uh, cool. So yeah, and then in the backdrop, we have what most slaughterhouses would have. It is, um, what do they call it? They call it like a glass board. Mm -hmm. It is basically fiberglass with a really smooth uh, liner. You can wash and scrub it and zero problems. Never have to paint it, never have to do anything to it. And then we just put a drip edge here so that all the water coming from here does not run in behind the table, it drains right onto the table. So and is that just like a basic flashing? What yeah, is that? That's, that's what they would call a standard uh, drip edge flashing. Okay. So it's got an inch and a half or inch lip with about a half inch lip down in here. And the lip you see here, this one inch lip here, would be here as well. So therefore water can't get in and behind. Right. So and then I like how you've got your water all along the top. So you've got a main line coming there with your, and then separate hose valves there for your washing guns. That's right. 
and then cool. that water continues over there to fill up our bubble washer right which we're going to redo to have a coil hose but it, yeah it's all quite simple and then that water here is hooked up to hot and cold and we can adjust that temperature of our water oh to wow that's cool yeah that's brilliant so yeah it's just this valve here so in the winter time oh, we open simple we open this puppy up and now we have hot water oh wow so you're not doing wet work when it's cold oh yeah that sucks, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then we have to just put a sink here because we uh the area we're going to look at here had to be certified uh yeah, as far as certified kitchen station. so they, they require you to have a sink so that's what that is and then yeah then yep. we start with our um tote our storage and all storage that. of our totes yeah lids pretty simple not that exciting uh we have a four foot by the width of this uh, shop which is 18 feet wide no sorry it is 22 feet wide by four foot shelf uh with a mezzanine up top mm -hmm. right now we just use a ladder to go up top therefore you don't need railings yeah uh but our goal is to put a um, a stairs that will hinge up and down and then we'll put a railing across here because right. there's just the liability goes up. Yeah, yeah. Um, here we just have a salad spinner. So is this like technically a certified kitchen? Yes, from here, from wow. the doorway on to there is certified. What did they say about this? Oh, sorry, they have not seen that, but they were okay with our previous one. So I, uh, yes, they're, okay. I'll have to see. Okay. Because it come because we spin our salad greens in that red tote. I'll Those orange orange uh, baskets. So this fits inside here, and because it never touches anything else, and because right. we can sterilize this, it should pass no problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because this was a washing machine before, we can get in everywhere and clean it out. It should pass no problem. Yep. So yeah, these just fit inside and then... Yeah. So this is where you guys do your greens washing? Yeah, so we can have a three, a three compartment sink. Yep. And what my long term goal is, well, right now we don't wash a lot of greens because we don't have to. We just are at the farmer's market. Yeah. However, this sink is the right size to actually put bubblers in here. Oh, to come cool. in and we're just gonna wash this then take this bump it in here I just have to move this guy later on bump it move it over wash it and then go like that So, so that's a triple wash. Then. Yes. Oh, wow. That's yeah, cool. our goal is to have that So I just have to move this guy around but it's all designed to work that way and then the bubblers will just come out Here and across and it'll be it'll work out. Just oh great. brilliant brilliant And then we just have a stainless steel sink that I salvaged out of a um, uh a, a juice juice place yeah and we saw our tomatoes in here yeah have other stuff underneath that we're going to put i want to put a uh, uh racking system and drawers and all sorts of stuff in there to just tidy stuff up yep yep um kind of stuff for the crew there right Plums we have stuff. just our our cedars will move because right behind this wall on the outside i now have a different shed so a lot of our tools will disappear out of here and this will just turn into a straight packing shed very cool um and, and then, then when, when here what do you is this just another area for sorting vegetables well and a packing table okay this thing because this works so nice and because it's so flat and everything is on casters in here yes it's amazing i want to show you just how nice it slides uh like expanded metal can be very tough to to slide stuff on but this is so smooth that mm -hmm you can use as a packing table yes and because it's perforated so if you put something on all your dirt and debris fall through you can these tables are so versatile and they're on casters again so we can actually use this it's locked here and it can be moved here for our greens harvest uh yes so we can move stuff from here to here to here to here. Brilliant. So it works quite well. And we can take this and bump it over here. Here, I'll get rid of this guy. This is... And extend this table for sorting, for sorting through here. So now we can wash, move it all over, get rid of it. Perfect. So Flexibility. the good thing about these casters is you can bring a product, slide it over, and then get this product out of here and get, move it over. That's brilliant. 
And then this is just sort of general purpose table. You could be packing on here, doing some office work on here. This is our original table, so this will get rebuilt. Right. Um, right now what we do is these crates slide out. And you'll put your, you'll put your tote on there, yeah. You'll put your tote on here. But the problem with this is you have all these crates underneath. So my goal is to build this out of steel underneath and then have the same system here for where to store a tote in a drop down yes. steel uh, shaft. Yep. That's adjustable for all your different heights, which is Brilliant. crucial because yes. a deep tote is that, that deep and then a medium tote and then a, a small tote. Very crucial to not reach into a tote yes. and not to reach too low. Exactly. So, so I want to I I talk about your board. This is, I find this really cool. And you were saying there's some things on here you want to change, but explain sort of your guys' methodology with how you're packing and everything here. Well, I guess we'll start with harvesting. Okay. Um, so let's just move this guy. Um, so what we have in here is this, these two sections are our harvest board. So we come through the door, there's our scale. We yep. weigh everything and it goes down onto the harvest board. Today okay. is September. Yeah. So this is what you need to harvest, and that's what you'll harvest. Uh, no, actually, that's the price point. Okay. Okay. So that our people can look at that board and calculate how fast they harvest and what they harvested, what the dollar value is. Oh, uh, cool. So we're doing a lot of open book business here. Uh, it's. It's it just for people to say, oh wow, I did this job. They can really self, um, how would you call that? Uh, evaluate. Self evaluate. Or, yeah. yeah, exactly. Audit. So what it happens is we come in here and we harvest. So today there were 17.4 kilos of cherry tomatoes harvested. Juliet's 14.2, heirlooms 19.3, beans 12.6. And the reason the board is empty is because today is Monday and it's yeah. a brand new day. So this will run an entire week. And at the end of the week, we'll record that into our computer and next week it, or it gets emptied and away we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now we start with that and now it goes into the cooler. Uh, when it gets harvested, that number gets written onto the tote or onto whatever the harvest container is. So we know what's on hand at all times, plus a date. We know when it was harvested, what the weight is, and it's in the cooler. Now, when we, this is our order board. Our order board here has our customers up top and it is our product along here and then another one in here because we can't fit it all onto one. So these up here are this replica of these, yep. as you can see. So we start off with beans, sprouts, pea shoots, like salad greens going down into romaines, roots, herbs, and then here we have onions, uh, garlic to tomatoes to cucumbers to beans to eggplants, peppers. So you receive orders from restaurants or whoever, and then you go and put them on the board here. Yes, so I'll give you, I'll show you exactly how this works. So why the color coding is in here is because before that we tried it just in white lines and black, like just white background and mm -hmm. black lines, but it was just too much. All the squares kind of look together. So color coding on every other one really helps break it up because now if I want to look down here in Ralvis is green, I go down, I follow green and I can actually chase it quicker. Yeah. So this just helps us. It, it, the green, the, the, the color coding doesn't really matter. It's just simply a way to break see up it. the board and yeah. see it. So I'll explain how this works. So here we have our veggie box program, bean sprouts. We have eight units on order. We have six pea shoots, sun shoots, three radishes too. So if you look down here, VB, this is all of our vegetable uh, veggie box order for tomorrow. Okay. Now, if I go to a restaurant and I want to see what Waterfront Cafe has, they have three bean sprouts. They have 15 carrots and they would have nothing else. If I go to OBT, they'll have two sun shoots, one curly kale, three carrots, one kohlrabi, etc. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really all simple. Those are all kilograms. kilograms yeah. Yeah. So what's crucial about this and how easy it is to pack is when someone now goes and starts doing all of the greens, they could just come in here and they look after lettuce, mix, arugula, red Russian, mustard, mizuna, amara. If that's their job for the day, they can come in. I'll just put arbitrary numbers on here. Eight, six, five, one, 
six, four, three. Just to give you more numbers yeah, to yeah. explain it better. So lettuce mix here. If that person pulls out lettuce mix, they know that the veggie box needs 14 units. They would know that Missionary Terrace would need eight kilos. Curious Cafe would need one. Red Fox Club would need six, and mm -hmm. Rods would need five. Once they're done with that, they will come through and put a little red mark, and we know it's done. Right. So the next person knows that it's done. They would then go to arugula, and same thing with arugula. They go here mm -hmm. arugula. There's eight units. Nothing else. Red marker after it's done, not before. And then there you go. Nice. Then you'll move on to red Russian kale. Same thing, five units, six kilos, four, three. Now I should maybe explain the differences. We call market and veggie box units because they're not a full kilo. They're actually a unit size. These numbers along here are our market and veggie box unit size numbers. Right. So 165 grams is a red Russian kale. Very cool. So that is that. Again, come through, check mark, check mark, check mark. Why does this work so well? Is because everybody just picks their, their normal product that they do. And when it comes towards the end of a packing day, people can just go around and say, oh, hey, sun shoots have not been checked off. Is anybody working on sun shoots? No, okay, they can go get sun shoots and it's done. I'm done. It yeah. starts happening. So you don't have a lot of, you don't have multiple people going for the, for multiple, like the same product and it requires it's self-organizing mm -hmm. it just works quite well at the yeah. end of a packing day we simply wipe it out so i can wipe out these numbers because i put those on arbitrarily <laughs> and we start anew right and then Perfect. there we go works and, quite well now and, i want to explain something else about okay. this is what this is is this is just steel sheeting in behind it's actually HVAC material. Oh, okay. So all of these are just one inch magnetic strips. So if we run out of a product, we can simply eliminate it from the board. Perfect. And slide everything up. So, so what this allows us to do is not have all of our product that we grow an entire year up here. It's only what, what we doing. have in season right now. Perfect. That's very crucial because later on, this will get eliminated and our, bo our order sheet will start just going down of in course. size because then we just focus on here you don't have to chase everywhere exactly see where everything yeah is. it just keeps you focused on what's and relevant. our harvest board has the same thing it has the same stickers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so yeah that's this has been a really really good system yeah uh, most everybody finds it quite easy to to follow once you understand it it mm -hmm. can be a bit overwhelming at the start but yeah especially when there's a lot of numbers on here when, so uh, let's talk about this here. This is sort of like organizing on the field. Yes. Tasks for people. Yes. You got a weekly calendar on there. And so are you delegating from here? Like do you guys have sort of yes. a team meeting every yes. morning every, or something? Every Monday for sure. And if in the busy season, more times. So we have this broken up into our days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Everything above the blue line here happens every week. So that does not get to be erased. There's little brackets in here. And then as they're done, you can see the red check marks. So we use red for anything that's done, mm -hmm. completed. Um, and then down here, we write what has to get done that specific day for that week. So like this week today, they had to cover up some stuff, harvest some certain stuff. There's nothing here on Tuesday because Tuesday we're already doing packing. And then this is a number that doesn't need to be there. And then what's, what's, what's the accountability? That's who did that job or that's what that's their responsibility. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go through that. So yeah, so now, um, and then we just have this general thing here as well. That's for something most likely for me to do, like when we have extra time, this stuff gets done. So this is last priority after all of this individual day is done. So here, accountabilities. Accountabilities is giving the person the task to make sure it's completed, they don't necessarily have to do it. They just have to make sure that it gets done. So accountabilities is just what it says. Mm -hmm. um, so Bean Sprouts, Emily's in charge of that. If she cannot be here or she's busy or doing something else, she will let someone else know how, what to do and then therefore it gets done. So, so when she's it's, responsible for it though. So when it's not done, we can say, hey Em, what happened then? Yeah. And so you'll find all of our names, everybody Very on cool. the list here. This has to be refined a little bit more, but it works. It, it's, 
as soon as we started this and this, oh my gosh, everybody was like, oh good, I, we know what's going on. <laughs> no longer every day did I, did Brenda and myself come out and be like, okay, this has to be good on this, 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 and this, and this. Now, we know now how long this takes. Yes. Because it happens every week. Yeah. So when I go to someone and say, soaking bean sprouts or planting that or, or picking long English cubes, how long will that take? They kind of know how long it takes. So we actually know what our, free, what our time the rest of our day is uh, is available for it. This is something that every farm has to have. This is your whole field laid out in detail. In yeah, to spec. And why is that such a good thing? Uh, well, first of all, everybody knows gets to know the section numbers as well. It gets to know where everything is. Mm -hmm. So when I say, instead of going and saying, oh, the last le uh, batch of head lettuces that we planted out, remember those, remember, do you remember where it is? And <laughs> you know, who knows where? Yeah. So if I say section six, bed eight, they know exactly where it is. If I say section 22, bed nine, they know where it is. So what this allows us to do, first of all, it allows us to plan our season quite well. So we have these in small document as well. Yep. And we, we have multiples of these where we write them out during the, during the year. Um, but this, is, um, this we can erase. So whenever uh, there's something out of that bed, we take it down, we wipe it out, and we know it's clear, and we know what goes in next. Yep. So we can say what we, we know what goes in next. We know what's empty. And we just know in general where, what, how so, big the field is. So this is, this is a current overview of what's in the field now. Yes, it's it might a, have to and, be. And you might make some notes to say, we're gonna plant this here then That's or something right. like that. But yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is within a week and a bit, yes. Okay. Yeah, now here, this isn't broken down because we know that shoots and micros, we could have it more detailed, right. but in general, we know that that's no why it is. No because they rotate so quick. Yeah, exactly. Like say for instance, we have kohlrabi in here. It's not like we know that there's two purples, two greens there, even though I know that. Um, so yes, in general, we just know what it is. So if I say to someone, oh, carrot planting number five needs to be harvested, it's in section nine, they know exactly where it is. Very cool. And why did you decide to make a 12 bed block? Ah, uh, numbers. So our insect netting come in bed spaces of three. So three times four is 12. Okay. Our sprinklers sprinkle six beds at a time. Six uh -huh. times six is 12. Yep. A caterpillar tunnel is four. So that is four times three is 12. Perfect. Um, and then I thought there was one other number. We used to have tens and I thought that would be cool because of just easier numbers. But it turns out 12 is just a much easier number for, for everything. Very and then cool. 50 feet long was from day one. Yeah. Uh, now the greenhouse here is slightly different, but that is exactly three bed widths long. The right. reason it's different because this is actually five feet here and this is five feet here. Right. So if you do that, the greenhouse itself has 150 foot long beds inside. Right. And then we have this oddball here, which is this greenhouse here is 75 feet and these beds out here are 80 feet. Right. That's the only non 50 by 12 foot area in here. There's three beds here. And the reason they're only six feet wide or six bed chunks is because of this greenhouse in here. Yes. So in general, everything is a 12 bed block. This one is identical. These two are identical, identical, identical. So it allows us to plant and plan our season, not really worrying about like, oh, this section is better, better, better than that section over there. We just know everything's the same. Everything's identical. The sprinklers fit everywhere the same. Our insect netting fits the same. Everything just fits everywhere.